Happy, <clears throat> happy Friday, scholars. Uh, really excited to kick it off with our shout outs this morning for 100% because it is one of our longest lists we've had yet. So I want to start this by saying that on Thursday, um, we, or sorry, and uh, after Wednesday's practice, um, yesterday morning, we did not have that many 100%. So it was six total. Um, but then we had so many scholars come to math reteach, come to bonus math reteach, come to office hours. It was so fun seeing um, so many of your faces. I'm noticing that almost every scholar who showed up at either reteach or office hours um, is on this list for 100%. So starting with UNC, shout outs to Miguel on Hallman. Well, Tenby, Lyric, Dillery, and Anna Lee. Really nice work. I know Lyric in particular put in a ton of work um, coming to multiple uh, math reteach opportunities to really uh, to really get some help and master dividing decimals. From SU, shout out to Jakira, Michelle, Ricardo, Nevea, Aiden, Corday, Abimael, um, Adam, and Danya. Uh, and then from Duke, shout out to Larry, Monica, Yulidi, Dami, Julian, and Camila. Again, so many faces um, in math reteach and office hours yesterday. Um, so great to see you there, see you getting that help, having your questions answered, um, and then as a result, uh, just showing so much achievement. So really nice work. Very, very impressed with those 100%. Today, we are going to continue working on dividing decimals, but we're going to take it one step further with the amount of decimals that we're going to see today. We are going to start, though, with a, uh, a review, a quick fire drill. So right now on my screen, we are just going to be writing an equivalent expression uh, for each of the division expressions. Um, and you need to have one, you need to write an equivalent one that does not have a decimal point. I want to challenge you to see how many of these you can get done in just two minutes. See if you can beat that timer. So make sure you have your scrap paper ready. Um, when I say go, not yet, but when I say go, I would recommend you write down first the problem. So you would take a look at choice A, and on your paper, write down first the problem, and then write your equivalent expression by thinking, hmm, I know I need something that equals the same amount that just looks a little bit different. The way to make sure that it still equals the same amount is if I do something to the dividend, I need to also do it to the divisor. If this were a fraction, if I did something to my numerator, I need to do the same thing to my denominator. So if I wanted to move my decimal point one spot over um, in my dividend to give me 1,421, I would need to do the same same thing in my divisor, but I don't want to give away the answer. Um, I do want to see how many of these you can do in two minutes. Take your mark, get set, go. Right, still have one minute left. I'm done. Curious if anyone was able to beat me or tie with me and how fast you could do all of these uh, equivalent expressions. We'll check in in just one minute. If you're done, go ahead and grab a crayon or a marker or a pen, something that you can use to check your work. Final 30 seconds, use this to double check your work. Make sure you did not just move the decimal point over in one of the numbers, either the dividend or the divisor, but that you truly moved it over um, in both, multiplying both sides by 10 to keep that equivalence. That's how we know it's an equivalent expression. All right, 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, 
three, two, and one. All right, let's check in and see what we got. Just a quick checker X on your own paper for letter A. Uh, we talked about this one just a little bit. Um, we should have gotten 1,421 divided by 60. Quick check if you got that correct. Letter B, we moved that decimal point one place over and should have gotten 17 divided by 3. I hope nobody got tricked and wrote divided by 30. I don't need to put a zero because my decimal point, um, I'm just moving over one place to give me an answer of 3. Cha-ching, if you got that correct. Choice C, 22 divided by 1 and 1 tenth becomes 220 divided by 11. Nice work. And finally, choice C, um, you had 10 divided by 5 tenths. That would become 100 divided by 5. All right, we're crushing it. If you got four out of four correct, let's draw ourselves an Easter egg in honor of it almost being Easter. I'm going to decorate mine with some stripes. Some polka dots. Nice work on our warm-up. All right, so we are crushing our equivalent expression. So a lot of really, really great answers in our independent practice yesterday. So now, of course, it's going to get a little bit harder. Today, we have a story about Monica. Follow along with your eyes as I tell you the story. So Monica, she has $8.25 that she has that she can spend at the candy store. And Monica decides she wants to spend all of it on gumballs. She realizes, yeah, it's a lot of gumballs I can get. Um, she's not going to put all of them in her mouth at the same time. That would be silly. Um, but she is going to save up all of them, maybe share some with her friends. Uh, but she wants to buy a bunch of gumballs. Now, each gumball costs 25 cents. So Monica wants to figure out how many gumballs can she buy if she has $8.25. Go ahead and find some room on your scrap paper. Grab a new piece if you need to. And let's start it off by writing an equation to match the story. Go ahead and do this on your paper. All right, let's check in with our equations that match this story. For the story, we should have $8.25 divided by that 20 cents. This will tell us the amount of gumballs that she's able to buy. So let's pause and think for a second. Can Monica buy more or less than eight and 25 hundredths or eight and a quarter gumballs? Go ahead and jot down more or less on your paper. Okay, it looks like there's a lot of agreement that she can, in fact, buy more than eight and a quarter gumballs because each gumball is less than one dollar. Now, if each gumball cost a whole dollar, she'd only be able to get eight of them, but each one is less than a dollar. In fact, some of us are already starting to think of how many gumballs she can get for one dollar. So I know that she can actually get more than eight and twenty-five hundredths or more than eight and a quarter gumballs. Lucky Monica. All right, so we've written our equation to match the story. Now let's estimate. Now you may already be thinking about some ways that you could solve this problem because we know how many quarters are in a dollar. Um, and this is something that we experience all the time. I have this much money. How many of these things can I buy? So using estimation, you can use whatever form of estimation you want about how many gumballs can she buy. Go ahead and solve that on your paper.
what we got for our estimation. So when I thought about this problem, I thought, well, I'm just going to um, round $8.25 $8 down to $8. How many gumballs could she buy if she only had $8? And I actually thought about this. Um, I saw a lot of scholars thinking about it the same way, where I know that there's four quarters in $1. So if Monica had $1, she would be able to buy four gumballs. But Monica doesn't just have $1. She's been saving up that money, and she actually has $8. So I thought of it as her, her four quarters, um, I'm sorry, her four, uh, yeah, her four quarters times the $8 that she has would actually, she would actually be able to buy 32 gumballs. That's a lot of gumballs. Now, this is just an estimate, so it's not exactly the amount of gumballs because I rounded down to just $8. But I know I'm looking for an answer of around 32 gumballs. Now, remember, she's not going to put all of them in her mouth at the same time. That would just cause a mess. Um, but pretty cool to have it, 32 gumballs. As soon as one of them runs out of flavor or starts to get um, kind of hard and kind of gross, she can just throw it away and pop a new one in there. All right, so we know about how many gumballs she can buy. Now we're actually going to solve. And to do this, we're going to use the same equivalent expressions or two expressions that equal the same amount, even though they don't look the same, that we've been using. The one thing that's just a little bit different is we just have more digits after our decimal point. We just have more decimal place values but no big deal. Let's go back to our scrap paper and let's look at our original equation. Go ahead and write this on your paper along with me. We had $8.25 divided by 25 cents. That equals our gumballs. We want to write an equivalent expression, so another division expression that equals the same amount but looks a little bit different. And just like we were doing yesterday, I would like to get rid of this decimal point because that's going to make it easier for me to divide. Now, yesterday, we did a lot of work where we moved the decimal over one place in our dividend and one place in our divisor, and we were good to go. But in this problem, if I only move it over one place, then I'm looking at 82 and 5 tenths. That still leaves me with a decimal, and I would prefer to just get rid of all of my decimals. So any ideas what we could do with that decimal instead of just moving it over one place value? Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. We can move it over two place values. Watch carefully. I'm going to move it over one, two. And now, if my decimal point is right here, in my dividend, I have 825. So I went from 8 and 25 hundredths to 825 by moving my decimal over two places. One, two. That's the same as multiplying by 100. So if I multiplied my dividend by 100 and moved my decimal point over two places, what do I need to do to my divisor? How many places do I need to move it? If you think you know, you can go ahead and write it on your paper. I'm not just going to move it over one place. Because if I move it over two places in my dividend, I have to do the exact same thing. So I need to move it over one, two place value places in my divisor, which gives me 25. Now I have 825 divided by 25, and now I can divide. I'm going to go ahead and set up a quick big seven. You're doing this on your paper along with me. All right, yesterday I was working some with um, Kamaya and Ajane, and they said that my division with big seven was actually really slow. And they said, Ms. Auburn, we were able to solve it a lot faster. So use whatever strategy you would like to use. Um, when I first look at this, I immediately, the one thing I know right away is that 25 um, times 4 gives me 100. So that's a great place I can start. And then I might go a little bit bigger. If you want to start bigger uh, right off the bat, um, a little bigger than I did, feel free to do that. Go ahead and solve your division problem.
so many different ways of thinking of this. I know some of you are probably a little faster than, than me. You may have had some bigger numbers to start with. All right, when you are done dividing, go ahead and look up here. After I did my long division of 825 divided by 25, I got to an answer of 33. And so I go back to my original problem, $8.25 divided by 25 cents is 33. Monica can buy 33 gumballs if she goes into that store with $8.25 and each gumball costs 25 cents. When I compare this to my estimate of uh, 32 gumballs, I was pretty close. And I knew I wasn't exactly right because I wasn't actually solving it. I was just estimating. But I knew it was going to be around 32 gumballs. But after dividing by creating an equivalent expression, by moving my decimal point the same number of places, in this case it was two for both my dividend and my divisor, I did get to an answer of 33 gumballs that Monica is able to buy. We'll see if those last her all week. All right. So let's take a look at the same conjecture that we were talking about yesterday. When dividing with a decimal in either the dividend or the divisor, which we know means either the numerator or the denominator, you can create an equivalent expression that doesn't have a decimal point as long as you do the same thing to both the dividend and the divisor. Yesterday, we got really good at doing uh, the same thing to both the dividend and the divisor. When we say do the same thing, yesterday we mostly meant multiplying by 10 or moving our decimal point over one place. Today, it's not always gonna be just one place. The great thing about um, creating equivalent uh, expressions is as long as I'm doing the exact same thing, to both numbers, I can do whatever I want. I can multiply by 10, or 100, or 1,000, or um, 10,000, or 1 million. I can move the decimal point over one time, two times, three times, five times, eight times, 10 times, as long as I do the same thing to both my dividend and my divisor. All right, let's put this conjecture into action. Let's take a look at our first problem. Find some room on your paper. First problem up is we are going to look at this problem, two and 34 hundredths divided by six hundredths. Go ahead and jot it down on your paper. Everyone should be writing. Everyone has their scrap paper. Everyone does the math. Nobody just watches me do all the math. All right, step A is telling us to write an equivalent division expression. So I've already set this up on my Scrap paper, I have the original problem written. I am now gonna write my equivalent expression. I am not gonna get tricked. I know I would like to create an expression that equals the same amount, but that doesn't have a decimal point in it. So I'm gonna be thinking about how many times do I need to move that decimal point to get it out of my number. And if I do something to my dividend, I have to do the same thing to my divisor. Go ahead and try it. Let's see what you get. All right. Let's take a look. For two and 34 hundredths, I see we moved our decimal point over one, two places, which gave us 234. If we moved it over two places in our dividend, how many places do we need to move it over in our divisor? That's exactly right. We need to move it over two places in our divisor. And so I'm gonna take my decimal point, I'm gonna move it over one, two, which leaves me with an answer of just six. 
So we were able to create an equivalent expression for 2 and 34 hundredths divided by 6 hundredths. 234 divided by 6 should equal the exact same amount. Now that we have 234 divided by 6, easy breezy. I know how to do a division problem like this. I'm going to go ahead and set up my big 7. And let's go ahead and solve. You probably have a faster way of solving this than I do, so don't feel like you need to write down what I'm doing. Go ahead and multiply, or excuse me, divide this out however you would like. All right, after I did the division, I got to a quotient of 39, which means my, my answer to my original problem of 2 and 34 hundredths divided by 6 hundredths is in fact 39. If you also got 39, nice work. Let's do an air high five. Get ready. All right. We were able to solve this decimal division problem, 2 and 34 hundredths divided by 6 hundredths, by first creating an equivalent expression, by moving the decimal point the same number of places over, essentially multiplying each side by 100 to move it over two places in both my dividend and my divisor. This helped us to get to the equivalent expression of 234 divided by 6. Once I had that, I was able to use my long division to solve. I did it with the big seven, and I got to a quotient of 39. So I know my answer to two and 34 hundredths divided by six hundredths is in fact 39. Nice work. The first thing we always need to do is create that equivalent expression. Let's take a look at a few more. We are going to go into a little bit more really, really, really fast drill where we just practice, 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 practice writing those equivalent expressions. Then we'll do just a teeny, teeny bit of division. And then that's it. You're done watching for today. And you can go ahead and get to solving, uh, finish today's work, and enjoy your weekend. So let's start with some fast drill. We are going to start off with just some equivalent expression practice. All right. You go ahead and uh, label your paper A, B, C, and D. Last time we were all able to finish in two minutes, but I think I was able to finish in about, I think I beat one minute. Uh, I'm going to see if I could beat one minute this time and see if anyone can beat me. Don't start yet. What you'll do for each problem is you're going to write down the original problem. Always good to see what you are looking at. And so, for example, for this very first problem, I wrote 9 and, uh, nine and 74 hundredths divided by 18 hundredths. I am not solving right now. I'm just writing my equivalent expression. So I think, how many places do I need to move that decimal point over? Now, there are some in here where you may have to add a zero. So don't get tricked. Two minutes on the clock. See if you can beat the two minutes. See if you can, if anyone can beat me. And then most importantly, double check your work so you get four to four correct. All right. Take your mark. Get set. Go. Ah, uh, letter B is a little bit tricky. Don't get tricked when you think about how many times you need to move that place value. Letter C is a little tricky as well. Okay. 
I read a minute, um, but I have had lots of practice with that. You guys still have one minute, see if you can finish all of them. I'm gonna go back and double check my work to make sure I didn't make any silly mistakes. Final 10 seconds, see if you can beat that clock. All right, let's see what we got. Have a pen or a marker, a crayon, or even a pencil, something out so you can check. So letter A, at nine and, and 74 hundredths divided by 18 hundredths. We moved that decimal point two times and both our dividend and our divisor. And we got to an answer of 974 divided by 18. Cha-ching, if you got it correct. Letter B, we had 10 and 13 hundredths divided by one and two tenths. This was our first kind of tricky one. I knew I needed to move my decimal point in my 10 and 13 hundredths over a one, a two times, which meant I needed to move my decimal point over in my divisor two times. After my first place, I ran out of digits, no big deal, so I moved it over one more, and I just filled that hole with a zero. So you should have 1,100, excuse me, 1,013 divided by 120. If you just have divided by 12, not correct, fix it now on your paper, but if you got it correct, go ahead and give yourself a check. Nice work. Letter C, we had 46 divided by 16 hundredths. I knew in order to get rid of the decimal right here, I would need to move it a one, a two places, which means I needed to move it one, two places in 46, giving me a grand total of 4,600 divided by 16. Crushed it. And letter D, here we had 90 and 4 tenths divided by two and 12 hundredths. In order to get rid of my decimal out of the two and 12 hundredths, I did need to move it over two place values, which means in letter D, I also, I'm sorry, in my uh, dividend, I also had to move it over two place values, which gave me a final uh, equivalent expression of 9,040 divided by 212. Touching. Nice work. If you got all of those correct, huge shout out to you. Draw yourself a happy, Let's draw a happy bunny today. There's my happy bunny, because I got them all correct. Nice work. All right. We do have two more I want you to try where we're actually going to first create an equivalent expression and then solve. But before we do that, I just remembered I do need to tell you something about Watson. As you know, um, Watson has kind of a sweet tooth. You've already seen that he likes to eat ice cream cake, not the biggest fan of the mushrooms. As Easter's coming up, um, on Easter, Watson's favorite, favorite thing about the whole holiday is eating these marshmallow peeps. I don't know if you have ever had marshmallow peeps. Um, they come in different shapes. You can get them uh, that look like chicks, that look like bunnies, um, lots of different animals. Um, and they're just like pure sugar. They're in all different colors. They have yellow and blue and green and purple, lots of fun spring colors. Um, but Watson just loves to eat peeps. I think they're called peeps because the original ones were shaped like little chicks and chicks go peep, 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 peep. Um, but if anyone were to ask you what does Watson love to eat, you would say peeps. Um, you can even write it down if you're worried you might forget, um, but he really loves them. Not so great for your teeth. They are pretty much nothing but sugar. It's basically a big marshmallow um, that looks like either like a bunny rabbit or a chick or something, and then it has like this uh, uh, crystallized sugar all over it. So they are pretty cute. Um, but they uh, are very sweet. And what's really fun, I don't let them do this, but if you put them in the microwave, um, they uh, blow up to be like 
huge, um, which is kind of fun, but it causes a very sticky mess. So don't try that at home. But Watson, he does love to eat peeps. So that's what he's really excited about for, uh, for this weekend. All right. Two more we're going to try. This time we're going to go all out. We are going to write equivalent expressions and then solve. The first thing you should be doing every single time you're solving a division uh, a division problem that has decimals in it is you should always be creating your equivalent expression. That's how we're solving them right now. So go ahead and find some final room on your scrap paper for today. Two, you're going to try and do um, both. We'll set we'll give ourselves a little bit of work time. Go ahead and set up. Um, problem A by writing it on your scrap paper. I have some very helpful hints for your independent practice right when this is done, so don't go anywhere. Um, but go ahead and get your problem set up. We'll set our timer for two minutes. That should be enough time to finish um, problem A, and then we'll just check in and then we'll move on to problem B. If you finish problem A, you can go ahead and start problem B. So go ahead and get to work. You should be first creating your equivalent expression. And then solving. You got 40 more seconds to uh, to finish up with, with A. You can move on to B if you finish A. Make sure you have an equivalent expression in addition to just your solution. Let's check in just with part A. When I went to write my equivalent expression for 1 and 48 hundredths divided by 4 hundredths, I knew I needed to move my decimal point over two place values for both my dividend and my divisor. So then I was really careful to write my new equivalent expression as 148 divided by 4. If you got that, 148 divided by 4, go ahead and give yourself a check for your equivalent expression. Then I went ahead and divided out, and I got to an answer of 37. If you got an answer of 37, give yourself a check. Nice work. You must be writing these equivalent expressions. So in today's independent practice, I shouldn't see anyone who is answering the division part correctly if you don't have your equivalent expression written correctly. So I know you've been taking really great notes right now. Um, so you have that so you can go back and look at it. One more to go and then you are done. Go ahead and take a final two minutes to solve part B, making sure you have your equivalent expression.
30 more seconds. Make sure, make sure, make sure you have written your equivalent expression. Let's check in. When I wrote my equivalent expression in order to solve this, I moved my decimal point over a two times in both my dividend and my divisor, which gave me a new expression of 1,175 divided by 235. Right now, we are not solving these division problems any other way other than writing our equivalent expressions. I should see everybody correctly writing their equivalent expressions on today's independent practice. After that, I went ahead and did some long division. I was a little stuck at first. I didn't know exactly how um, what to multiply 235 by. I knew 10 was too big, so I actually just started with 2. And I just did some quick uh, addition right on the side to figure out that 235 uh, plus 235 was going to be 470, and I just stuck with that um, until I got down conveniently to just 235, and this gave me a quotient of 5. So I knew that my answer to my problem of 11 and 75 hundredths divided by 2 and 35 hundredths was 5. Nice work. If you got that one correct, I want you to draw your very best marshmallow peak, just like Watson likes. You can draw it as a bunny or as a chick. Fine. All right. His most favorite Easter food is peeps. Don't forget. All right. Quick, helpful hint for your independent practice today. Today, you do need to write in your very own equivalent expressions. Now, the part that gets a little bit tricky is that your keyboard does not have a division um, symbol like I have typed in here. So I put in the directions that when asked to write an equivalent expression, you are going to use the slash key to show a division symbol. So if I wanted to write, let's just say I go back to, to part A and I want to write 1 and 48 hundredths divided by four tenths and I wanted to write my um, equivalent expression. Here I have it with a division symbol. The way you type that on a computer, watch carefully, is 148 slash four. You don't need to do any spaces at all. So you don't even need to hit the space bar. It can just look like 148 slash four. As always, the computer grades your work, and then I always, always, always go back through it. So does Mrs. Dent. So if for some reason you feel like you're you're getting the right answer, but the computer's counting it wrong, don't panic. I always look at it. You can also send me a message. I know I've got a couple messages throughout the week of, I typed this in, and it shows up weird. No big deal. I can always go back and fix it. But remember to use this slash symbol to show your equivalent expression. You don't need an equal symbol because we're not saying um, yet what it's equal to. It's just an expression. 148, 148 divided by 4 written like this is exactly the same as 148 divided by 4. Today we do have some modifications to our office hour times. Our office hours today are going to be um, at 2.15 instead of 3.15. That's not right. Sorry, that was a mistake. Our office hours today are going to be at 1.45. I'm so sorry. I will post this in writing as well at 1.45. So if you have any, um, any questions as you are working, I'm just making sure that 145 is correct. 145 is correct. If you have any questions as you're working, either about the math or about um, typing any of these numbers in, please make sure uh, you come to office hours today for math. Um, they are uh, a little bit earlier today at 145. And it's just a final reminder, when you are typing this in, so when you are writing your own equivalent expression, you need to be typing in 
um, with the slash mark to show the division symbol. All right, happy solving. Have a great weekend. Can't wait to see tons of 100%. Um, a great way to go into your weekend. And I'll see you guys on Monday unless I see you at office hours today.